Hey guys, my name is Ethan. We're here to do some yoga, specifically yoga for runners. Okay, we're going to loosen up the hips, we're going to loosen up the quads, the hamstrings, the calves, whole nine yards. Okay, now you might be watching this and saying, hey, I'm not a runner, I don't need this. Well, before you like forward on to the next fancy yoga video, just try it out because who doesn't like to have loose hips and just to feel good in general? Okay. Full disclosure, I myself, not a fan of running, but I did just get done snowshoeing for a week and I'm feeling pretty tight, so let's go loosen that stuff up and get to it. Alright, so first we're going to start off with some kneeling and some breathing. Okay, so we're just going to come down here and we're just going to kind of keep the knees together and feet are flat and just sit on the heels. Okay, now let's go ahead and kind of lengthen the spine. You can feel the chest lifting a little bit. Lift up from the crown of the head. Feel the shoulder blades kind of pressing down a little bit. Okay, and now just close your eyes and bring one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly. And we're gonna do some breathing. So this is uh, just basic yoga breathing. Okay, so it's gonna be inhaling and exhaling in and out through the nose. So we're just keeping the lips closed the whole time. So let's go ahead and take a nice inhale through the nose. And exhale through the nose. And take another inhale. So these inhales should last about three to five seconds. And exhales should last about three to five seconds. Inhale. Exhale. And when you inhale, feel the belly filling up with air. Exhale, feel the belly pressing the air out. So now inhale, feel that belly filling up as the air rises up. And exhale from the top down. So the air comes out from the chest first and then press the air out with the belly. So this is like you're filling up a cup of water. So inhale, the belly fills up first and then it comes up to the top. Then exhale, come out from the top first. And then you press the air out with the belly. So inhale, belly fills up. Air comes up like into the collarbone area. Exhale from the top down. So the air comes out from the top. And then you press the air out with the belly. So inhale, belly fills. Air comes up. Exhale from the top down. So keep that belly full until the last little 20% and then you press the air out. Inhale, bottom up. Exhale, top down. So you should really be able to feel it with your hands. That's why we have the hands here. And exhale. Let's do two more of those. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. From the bottom up. Exhale, top down. Okay, so that's basic yoga breathing. You try to use that breath throughout this whole practice. Okay, even if you can't do any of these poses and you just sit here and breathe for 40 minutes, then that's a good yoga practice. Okay, all we're trying to do is to turn the attention inward. So you can do that through breathing, but we can also do it through doing these poses. But you're trying to turn your attention inward, not so much what's going on outside. 
All right. By now, your knees and ankles should be pretty stretched out. Uh, the front of your shins here should feel pretty stretched. So let's come into a downward facing dog as a counter pose to that. So let's come forward to table pose and curl the toes under and lift the hips up into downward facing dog. Let's go ahead and try and walk it out a little bit, bending one knee and then the other. Good. And then dig into this down dog. So you're going to lift up from the hips. So lift the hips up and tilt the tailbone up. Okay. Now engage the quads to try to help straighten the knees a little bit. They might not get straight. Like mine obviously are not straight, but straight 10. Now we're going to try to lift the tops of the feet up towards the shin. Okay. That's going to help press the heels down. Now press the hands into the mat and the fingertips into the mat so much you can almost feel the, the base of the palm uh, lifting up. Okay, maybe even put a little more pressure on the thumb and the index finger to get some internal rotation in the arms. And come back to that breathing. Make sure we're breathing good. All right, come back down to table pose. All right, now we're going to do a toe stretch. So it's just like that kneeling, but we're going to keep the curls, the toes curled under. And this, at first, might not seem like a whole lot, but you got the toes curled under and sitting back on the heels. And it might not seem too bad at first, but then we're going to sit here for like a minute, and eventually it's going to really feel like torture and you're gonna wanna like immediately get out of this pose, which, I mean, if you're feeling pain, get out of the pose, okay? Um, but if it's just discomfort, like I'm feeling, just stick with it. You could even, you know, come back to our breathing. Take an inhale, take an exhale. Just try focusing on that breathing. while your lower body might currently feel like it's being pulled off or something. But just try to stick through it. And maybe another, I don't know, 30 seconds here. Just keep breathing. A little more. Stick with it. Take two more breaths. And all right, let's come out of that. Oh, yeah. Thank God that's done. Okay. Maybe uncurl the toes. Just press the tops of the feet down into the mat. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. It's a toe stretch. Uh, it's a doozy. All right. So now, uh, let's see. We're going to do a kneeling Achilles stretch, which stretches out the Achilles, but also kind of stretches out the calf, too. So all we're going to do now is bring this left foot forward and bring the right knee forward up a little bit to meet that foot and just sit down on this right heel. Okay. Now we're just going to keep shimmying forward until we start to feel a stretch back in this calf. And, you know, everyone's going to be different. You know, if, if you can't get your body down low enough to feel that stretch, um, you know, you could try just taking your hand and pressing this knee down. I'd imagine no one can get their knee all the way down to the floor. That'd be... A little crazy, but maybe there's some people who can do it. You know, props to you. Either way, just keep pressing down on that knee, feeling that stretch. You can come back to that breathing. 
That's good. Breathing is good. Because after all, when we run, we breathe. Usually we breathe pretty hard. So if we can, you know, in this practice, try to practice that controlled breath, then maybe we can control the breath a little more while we're running rather than panting. Okay? All right. Now we're going to come out of that and just bring this foot forward. We're going to do a kneeling lunge. Okay, this is going to start to open up that right hip and that right quad. And, you know, just keep lunging this forward as far as you can. Just like we did earlier, try to feel the chest lifting, shoulder blades pressing down. Take these hands on this thigh here and maybe gently press your hands onto that thigh as the shoulder blades are pressing down. Nice long spine, lift up from the crown of the head. Keep lunging forward. Two more breaths. Cool. All right, come out of that. Let's do the other side now. So we're going to step this right foot up now. Scoot this left knee up. Sit on the left heel and start to lunge forward. And maybe if you're feeling that, that's cool. If you want to just lift up and try pressing this knee down, that's cool. Whatever it takes to get a stretch. And let's hold this for a couple more breaths. And come out of that. Now, if any time, at any time in this video you want to hold these poses longer, just hit pause. That's the beauty of YouTube. Just hit pause. Keep holding that pose. It's cool. I won't be offended. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's do this kneeling lunge. So we got this right foot stepped way forward. You can scoot this left foot back a little more. Hands onto the thigh. Lunge forward. Start to feel it opening up the hips, pressing those hands onto the thigh, chest lifting, shoulder blades pressing down, spine extended, and actually there's a little bit of a back bend kick in here. So lift that chest a little more, lift up from the crown of the head. Couple more breaths, keep lunging forward a little more, just try to sink more and more into it as we keep going here. And breathe into it with every exhale, lunge into it a little more. Alright, let's come out of that. And alright, we're just gonna do some sun salutation A's. This is, kind of, this is a full yoga practice, so um, generally in all my full yoga classes, I always do a sun salutation A, just because it helps uh, kind of generally get the body warmed up, and a lot of this is useful for uh, stretching out the lower body too, which we'll find out right now. So let's plant the hands, curl the toes under, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Now remember all that stuff about down dog that we did before? Let's try to sink into it again. Lift up from the tailbone. Tilt the tailbone up. Hands pressed in. Heels pressing down. And breathing. Alright, now let's bend the knees. Look forward. Step the feet up to the front. Inhale, lift halfway. Okay, spine is nice and long. This is activating the hamstrings right now, right? Now let's go ahead and fold forward. Grab opposite elbows. Hang out here for a few breaths. This pose in particular, it uh, stretches out the hamstrings, but also stretches out the back. I find that I could sit here for, you know, eight, ten breaths and 
by the end of that tenth breath, I'm folded forward a lot more than I was when I first started. So again, let's just keep sinking into it. Maybe two more breaths here. All right, release the hands. See, all of a sudden now I can like almost get my hands flat on the floor. All right, now let's slowly lift up. So we're going to take three breaths to lift all the way up. The last thing to lift is the head. So inhale, start to lift. And our second breath. And our third breath, we get to the top and the head lifts up. Good. Inhale, lift the hands up. Exhale, hands at the heart. Now let's inhale, reach the hands back up. Grab that right wrist. Take it over to the left side just for a little side stretch because that feels good. Inhale, lift up. Grab the left wrist, take it over to the right. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Find that extension in the spine. Exhale, plant the hands. Step the feet back. Top of a push-up. Now this is activating the core. And the core is really important for running. Um, it helps to, you know, stabilize the body and just to make it a little more secure so you're not just plopping all of your weight onto the legs, putting all that pressure on the joints. Okay, now to lower down through Chaturanga. So we're going to bring the shoulders forward a little bit and we're not going to lower all the way down. We're going to bring the elbow, bend the elbows, keep the elbows close to the rib cage. Okay. Only lower down about halfway so that the elbows are 90 degrees. If you need to lower the knees, that's cool. Okay. Now, that's it, chaturanga. Now roll to the tops of the feet, lift the chest, gaze up, try to pull the chest through the arms so much so that your feet might slide forward. Engage the, the glutes. Okay. That's going to help with that back bend that we're kicking here. Good, now curl the toes under. Lead with the hips into downward facing dog. And then reset that down dog, dig in like we did before. Okay, now from this down dog, let's lift the left leg up, bend the knee, stack the left hip on top of the right hip. Now you're really gonna feel that right heel pressing down. Yeah, that's really stretching the, the calf there. Good, now step that left foot forward. Pivot the back foot flat. Lifting all the way up into warrior two. There we go, left hand forward, right hand back. Gazing off the left fingertips. Good, now you're going to feel a stretch in the groin area, right? Uh, to accentuate that a little more, let's lunge a little more, tuck the tailbone under. Almost feels like you're pressing the hips forward, like towards the orange wall here. Good, lunge a little more. Now even though your feet aren't going to move, imagine you're trying to slide your feet together. Right, that kind of activates the whole lower body here. Lunge a little more. Okay, now we're going to do a side squat over to the right. So let's lunge into this right leg. As the left leg straightens, you can point those left toes up. Feeling the stretch here in the inner thigh. Good, hands are at the heart. Trying to keep your balance here. All right, now let's lunge or come back up. Uh, we're going to do wide-legged forward fold. 
Sorry my back is faced to you, but I'll be facing the other way next time. So. <coughs> anyway, let's kind of point the toes forward. Legs are nice and wide. Let's go ahead and lift the arms and lengthen the spine. Now keep this spine lengthened as you start to fold down. And then round the spine into it. Hello. And bring your hands onto the mat. Now gently press the hands away from you. Your hands aren't going to move, but press your hands away from you. That's going to help get into the stretch a little more. Good. Now activate the quads, okay, the thighs. Imagine you're trying to lift your kneecap. Okay, that's going to, your kneecap might not actually lift, it probably won't. But you're going to act, but that's going to help activate the quads. By activating the quads, we release the hamstrings and allowing them to stretch. Okay, now let's bring the right hand into the middle, lift that left hand up. Bring the left hand down into the middle, lift the right hand up. Good. Bring the hands back down, sink into it one more time. And then lift all the way up. Good, now we're doing a triangle pose. So point the left toes forward. Um, and this back foot is about at a 45 degree angle. Let's take this left hand, reach it forward. Reach it forward. Then bring the left hand down. Reach the right hand up. Gaze up towards the right hand. This is triangle pose. Try to lengthen the spine. Try to open up through that right shoulder. Breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Control breath. Because if we can control our breath through these crazy poses, then maybe we can control our breath a little more while we're running, right? All right, let's revolve this triangle. So we're going to lift up, shorten the stance a little bit, point the right toes forward. So you're going to shorten the stance as much as you need to in order to get both sets of toes pointing forward. Okay? You might be like right here. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay? So whatever works for you, both sets of toes are pointing forward. Let's keep the spine elongated as we fold forward and then place the right hand down lift the left hand up this doesn't work for you but like even in that triangle post you couldn't quite get that hand down you can use a block okay if you don't have a block use anything use a book a water bottle something okay so you can have the block here you can you know, whatever side works best for you. Okay? I'll do it right here because that feels pretty good. Just because necessarily you can go all the way down doesn't mean it's the best for you. Okay? Sometimes you can get a better stretch by lifting up a little bit and the more the muscle is stretch. I don't know. Whatever works. Whatever feels best. Try it out. You know, try each variation. Either way, Lifting the left hand up. We're breathing. And one more breath. Good. Bring that hand down. Good. Let's lift all the way up now. We do a waterfall pose. So you're going to bring your hands behind your back into a prayer position like so. If that doesn't work for you, you can grab opposite elbows. That's cool. Uh, or if that doesn't work, you can just interlace the hands behind the back. Okay? But otherwise, hands are a prayer. 
And just like we did before, we're going to keep the spine nice and long as we fold forward. And then maybe towards the end, round the spine a little bit. And just sink into this as much as you can. One more breath. Good, let's lift up. Woo! Let's plant the hands. Step the feet back. Lower down through Chaturanga, shoulders forward. Lowering halfway down, elbows at 90 degrees. Roll to the tops of the feet now, up dog. Curl the toes under, lift the hips, lead with the hips, down dog. Okay, now we'll do the other side. So we're going to start with the right leg lifted up. Bend the knee, stack the right hip on top of the left hip. Feel that left heel pressing down. Step the right foot forward now. Back foot pivots flat. Inhaling up to warrior two. So what did we talk about last time? Lunge into that leg. We talked about tucking the tailbone under, pressing the hips forward. Okay, what else did we talk about? We talked about imagine you're sliding the feet together. Okay, that activates the lower body. Now lunge into that right leg a little more. Breathing. Okay, let's side squat over to the left. So lunge into the left leg, hands together at the heart. Just sink down as much as you can. Right leg is straightened, maybe point those right toes up. controlled breathing. Okay, lunge or lift back up. Now we do our forward fold. So feet are pretty much pointed forward. You know, if that doesn't work for you, point them out, you know, 45 degrees. That's cool. It's just a different stretch. For this stretch, we're going to try and keep the toes forward. <clears throat> so let's lift the hands up and then fold forward. Hands come down the mat. You're going to press the hands away from you, right? Not actually, not actually moving them, but keeping the hands placed, but, but trying to push them away. Engaging the quads. Good. Bring the right hand in the middle of the mat. Lift the left hand. Bring the left hand down the middle of the mat. Or in the middle of your legs, your feet. And lift the right hand up. Good. Bring the right hand down. Let's sink into this one more time. Good, lift all the way up, triangle pose. So we're pointing the right toes forward, left toes about a 45 degree angle. Okay, take the right hand, arms out to a T, take the right hand, reach it forward, and then bring it down. Again, if you need to use that block, you can use that block here. Otherwise, your hand is down on the mat. Try to lengthen the spine even as we're in this crazy uh, twisted up pose here. Open back through this left shoulder. Okay, let's revolve this. So step the back foot forward until both sets of toes are pointed forward. Okay, however close you need to get the feet. Whatever works for you. 
to bring the left hand down, perhaps onto a block like I'm about to do, and lift that right hand up. So now we're opening back up through that right shoulder, peeling that right shoulder back. Good. Bring that hand down. Let's lift up. So now the feet should stay in pretty much the same position. That should work good for this pose. We're going to bring the hands together behind the back at prayer or grabbing opposite elbows or interlacing the hands be behind the back. Lift the chest, gaze up a bit. Now keep the spine lengthened as you fold forward. And sink into this as much as you can. All right, now lift. All right, good. Let's finish that out. Plant the hands, step the feet back. Lower down through Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Curl the toes under, lead the hips, down dog. Okay, from this down dog, let's take a nice, really big inhale. Open the mouth and sigh it out. Take another big inhale. And again, sigh it out. All right, close the lips, come back to that, that yoga breath called Ujjayi breath, means victorious breath. All right, now, let's come forward to plank pose. What did I say about the core earlier? Yeah, core is important when running. Core is, core is important for everything. So I don't care if you run or not. You need to have a strong core. So how are we going to do that now? We're going to lower down into the forearms. Yeah, baby. All right. Let's lift the left toes up like two inches. Okay? It's going to feel like the longest two inches of your life. Now, again, if you need to, you know, modify, modify this. If you need to lower that right knee, that's cool. Otherwise, try to stick with it. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to start sweating. Now take this left foot off to the side, so it's hovering off of the mat. Good. Now bring the left knee to the left elbow. Just bring it back. Left knee to left elbow. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Bring it back. Bring it back to the center. Lower the left toes. Let's do the other side. Right toes lift up two inches. Now bring that left foot up, or right foot off to the side. Here we go. Five crunches here. Right knee to right elbow. Bring it back. Exhale when you crunch it in. Inhale when you bring it up. There we go. Keep going. I think we're at four. Last one, five. Okay, plant those left toes. Here we go. We're going to walk the feet up towards the elbows. This is dolphin pose. So it's right down dog on your forearms. Lift this left foot up. Okay, let's take three bunny hops right here. One, two, three. Lower that left foot. Lift the right foot up. Here we go, three bunny hops. One, two, three, and that's fine. That's enough. Whew. All right, now might be a good time for some water. Go ahead, I'll join you, even though we're not quite done with the core yet. Just one more thing. Right now you might be thinking, where's all the good stretchy feel um, poses? They're coming up. 
But all this stuff is equally as important for running. Okay? That's why we're doing it. It's not all just feel goods. Alright. If you have two blocks, you might want them right now. You can use two books. Use anything. Or you can use nothing. Just do what you can do. What we're going to do is cross the feet, cross the legs, plant the hands, and then you're just going to press down with the hands, lift the butt up. Some of you might have shorter arms. That's why the blocks come in handy. Okay? Then you can really lift the butt up. So, my arms aren't necessarily short, but I'll do it anyway because I'm really lifted up now. It feels good. Okay, now I'm trying to lift this right foot up. Now, maybe you can just lift like the heel of the other foot. And then maybe just lift the other foot completely so both feet are off the floor. You're suspended like you're levitating. And you're going to hold it. Uh, then you're going to lower down. Whew. So that might not have worked for you, right? Um, but I imagine you can probably plant your hands and lift your butt up. So if that's what you can do, that's what you're going to hold. Okay? Just because you can't do the full version of the pose doesn't mean you can't do any version of the pose. Okay? So let's try it one more time. Plant the hands, lift the butt, try lifting the other foot first, try lifting the left foot first. And then, like, try lifting the right heel. And then, even maybe try just for a second, lift up the other foot. Right? Maybe you can lift it for two seconds, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight, or nine, or ten, and that's enough. Good job. Whew. All right. Uh, we're just going to do a little bit of balancing now. This is a full yoga practice, like I said. So we're doing everything. We're doing balancing, we're doing core, we're doing our sun salutations. So... That's how I roll. We're going to do a yoga class. Let's do a full-fledged yoga class, right? Alright, so now we're doing balancing because that's part of a full-fledged yoga class. <coughs> Let's come to down dog. Curl the toes under, lift the hips. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, step that left foot forward. Okay, it's coming to a crescent warrior first. Okay, so you're still on the ball of that back foot. Okay, engaging the quads, pressing back through that right heel. Now it's interlaced last three fingers, so we got like our yoga gun here, even though I'm anti violence. <laughs> Alright, now we're coming to Warrior 3. So we're just going to put all the weight into this left foot as we lift the right foot up. Really press that left foot into the mat. Okay, bring the left hand down. Bring the right hand up. This is half moon pose. Gaze up towards the right fingertips. If you fall over, which you will, just get back into it. it doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means you fell over. Good. Now let's revolve this. Bring the right hand down. Bring the left hand up. So again, the block might come in handy here, just like we did in that triangle. Good. Bring the left hand down. Now let's come all the way up into majorette pose as gracefully as possible. Okay, now we're going to do eagle pose. So you're going to cross this right leg over the left leg, bring the right elbow underneath the left elbow, bring the hands together, 
and lower down. Lift the elbows. Good. Inhale, lift back up to major red. Last bouncing pose, tree pose. Bring the sole of this foot inside of that left thigh. Hands together at the heart. Press the hips forward as you bring this right knee back. Now press that right foot into the left thigh. So you're creating a little ball of energy. You could lift the hands up above the head. Now if this doesn't work for you, try not to put your foot on your knee because your knee doesn't bend left and right. Okay, you would just put your foot on your calf. But again, still press the hips forward, bring that right knee back. Maybe lift the arms, keep breathing. And that's enough. And shake out that left leg. Let's do the other side. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. Lower down through Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step that right foot forward. Good, stay in the ball of that back foot. Inhale, crescent warrior. Okay. Trying to engage the quads to straighten that back leg. Press back through the left heel. Good, now interlace the last three fingers. Yoga gun. Arms lift up. Now we're just kind of pivoting forward onto this right foot as we come into warrior three. Press back through that left foot, back through the left heel. Straighten that left leg, lift from the back of the left thigh. Half moon pose, right hand comes down, left hand lifts up. Try to peel open that left shoulder. That left foot is still flexed. Revolve it now. Left hand comes down. Maybe grab your block here. Lift the right hand up. Right hand comes down. Let's lift all the way up now, Majorette. Okay, so this whole right leg is pushing down into the mat. Now let's do eagle pose. So cross this left leg over, left elbow underneath the right elbow. As you try to bring the hands together and sink down into it. Maybe lose your balance, but get into it. Try again. Lift the elbows. All right. Lift up. Majorette. Now tree pose. Bring the sole of that left foot inside the right thigh or the right calf. Okay. Hands together at the heart. Press the hips forward as that left knee comes back. Press the hands together as you press the left foot into that right thigh. And the right thigh back into the left foot. Maybe lift the hands up. One more breath. All right. Good job. No balancing. Fish it out. Inhale, lift the hands up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, lower through. Inhale, up dog. 
Exhale, down dog. Take a nice big breath in. Side out. Take another big breath in. Side out. All right, let's come back to table pose here. And, hey, if you're wanting a class that has just all the feel-good stretchy poses, now's the section where we get to that. Okay? So, this is just for you. <coughs> um, actually, let's come back to downward facing dog. Curl toes under, lift the hips. Let's lift that left leg up. Come to dragon pose. Step that left foot forward. Um, come into the top of that back foot. Maybe even scoot that back foot back a little more. Okay, so your hands are inside that left foot. Okay, not like this. We're inside the left foot. Let's get a nice deep lunge going. And now start to bend the elbows. So you're lowering the upper body down, and you might be able to go so far as to bring the forearms onto the mat. And here we go, this is our dragon pose. So just keep breathing, the re exhale, try to sink more into it. Nice big deep breaths. And again, if this doesn't work for you, you know, down in the forearms, you know, you can stay lifted up here. Like I said, just because you can't do the full version doesn't mean you can't do any version. So you can stay up here, bend the elbows just a little bit. All right, but no matter what version you have now, now we're going to come into a pigeon pose. So lift up a little bit. Now we're going to just gonna shimmy our left foot over to the right side of the mat. So heel toe it over to the left side of the mat. And then bring this left uh, shin down here. Now scoot this back foot back a little more. Let's try bringing the hands onto the thigh and onto the foot. And just chill out here for a few. Feel the hips sinking down into it. You know, ideally we're trying to get this shin parallel with the mat. It's not going to happen for 90% of us, including me, okay? But just working towards that, okay? If your shin here is at a 45 degree angle, that's fine. But just know that you're trying to bring this foot up a little more as, you, as your practice evolves, okay? So, okay, now we're here. Now we're just going to fold forward, but don't round the spine immediately. Lead with the belly button. So you imagine you want the belly button to come down first. Okay? And then, once you got that far, then you can round the spine, bring the forehead onto the mat. And again, just breathe into it. Every exhale, you're sinking more and more into it. We'll hold here for five breaths, and I'll shut up for five breaths. Yeah, this feels really good. Let's do five more breaths. All right. If you don't hold it longer, you could hold it for five minutes. That's actually like a yoga thing to do. It's called yin yoga, which we might do at some point. Not today, though. Anyway, all right, now we're going to come into a uh, fire log pose. So you're just going to come onto this left hip here. You're going to swing this right foot around. 
And now just like fire logs, you're going to stack this left shin, this left calf, this left leg here, and bring it on top of this left shin. <clears throat> so this foot is on top of this knee, this knee is on top of this foot. This leg, this knee might be up really high, that's fine, okay? you're eventually going to sink more into it because you'll be surprised where you start is probably not where you're going to end. Okay, So even me, like right now, that's my knee is way up here. That's as far as it goes. It doesn't go down any further. Watch by the end of this series here. Okay, so flex this foot. So you're kind of bringing the top of the foot up, right? Now, you can even flex the other foot too. Now bring the hands forward. And now just try to fold forward as much as you can. Okay, and we're just gonna keep doing this for a while. And we're gonna breathe. And just like we did before, with every exhale, we're gonna sink more into it. Right, and you might start to notice that that right knee is coming down, right? It's like magic. At least that's what mine's doing. Yours might not be doing that. And you might think I'm full of shit. Which <clears throat> might be wrong. You might be right. But either way, I notice that my right knee is going down. And so we're just going to keep doing this for another few breaths here. And I can now really fall forward. Like when I first started this pose, I was all practically like sitting straight up, like I couldn't fold forward at all. But now as this evolves, I'm almost completely folded forward. My right knee is down touching my left foot. And it's like magic. All right, so lift back up. Hopefully you made some progress with that and you feel good about it. If you didn't, try again next time and uh, see what happens. Because as you know, or you may not know, this is a yoga practice. It doesn't mean that you can nail every pose first time. That's why they call it a practice. So, all right, let's do the other side now. So come back to downward facing dog. Lift the right leg. Step the right foot forward. We're starting off with our dragon pose. So scoot that left foot back a little bit. Hands are inside the right foot. Both hands inside the right foot. Now let's kind of lengthen the spine a bit. And then start to bend the elbows to lower the upper body down. Maybe you can come down the forearms. Maybe you need to wait five breaths until you can lower down the forearms. Whatever works for you and your body. See, that's the thing. Like, everyone's body is completely different. Even when I teach a class of only five people, uh, you know, no one's body is going to be the same, even those five people. So I'm essentially teaching five different classes for five people. Here I'm on YouTube, who knows how many hits I'm going to get, but say I have 200 views teaching 200 different classes here. So you really got to, just got to be in tune with your body, that's what yoga does anyway. We're tuning in inward, tuning our focus inward. And just do what works for you. Don't do it just because I'm doing it. Alright. And that's, yeah, not even for yoga, but for everything. Don't just do something because someone else is doing it. <clears throat> All right. Now we're going to come into pigeon pose. So we're going to heel toe that left right foot over to the left side of the mat. <clears throat> and we're going to bring that left hand onto the left foot, right hand onto the right thigh. Lift up. Feel the hips sinking down maybe a little bit. Even if it's like two millimeters sinking down, 
That's progress, right? Good. Now with the spine nice and long, we're going to lower down, bring the belly button down first. Good. And then round the spine and just sink into it. And again, I will shut up for 10 breaths. start to lift up and we're coming into log pose now so just come onto this right hip you might need to come way down like onto the right elbow so you can swing this foot around <clears throat> okay now just like we did before we're stacking this leg on top of this leg this left foot is on top of the right knee this left knee is on top of the right foot. We're going to flex the left foot. We're going to flex the right foot. We're going to, and you'll see where I start, right? Like this is as far as I can go. This right, this left knee is way on top here, right? Let's just stick with it. See what happens. So bring the hands forward. Good. Now breathe. Every exhale, breathe into it. And keep breathing and have patience. Keep breathing. Keep sinking into it. Two more breaths. And then take a peek up and notice where you might be. Hey, I made a lot of progress in those 10 breaths there. Good. Start to lift up. Uh, let's bring the feet forward and kind of shake it out a little bit. Good job. Okay. <clears throat> Next, frog pose. So this one, again, just like that toe stretch, might feel like torture. So what we're going to do is just turn sideways here so you can get both feet on the mat. So you got knees on the mat, you got your feet pointing outward. So both sets of toes are pointing out. Okay? Now... Start to bring the knees apart. You might see like hockey goaltenders doing this stretch a lot. Okay, bring the knees apart. Now try to bring the feet out a little more. Okay, so your your legs, your, your calves and your shins should pretty much be parallel to the front and the back of the mat. Okay? Well, we're just going to spread the knees out as far as we can. Good. Now that right there might seem good enough for you. Otherwise, it's lower down on the forearms. Now use your hands to press into the floor and press the hips back. Yes, pressing the hips back. And just stick with this. We're going to stay here for a good while. because this pose in particular really needs some time to do its work. And really this is kind of a mental game too, just, you know, even though it feels like we might be being tortured, to try and come back to that breath and maybe even find some gratitude 
for the fact that we can do this pose. Because trust me, I know a lot of people who can't do this pose. You might be one of them. In which case, you know, you could come into a child's pose. Right now might be a good time to get some water. But for those of us who can do this pose, seriously, like, find some gratitude that you can do this pose. And just having that little shift of mindset might make it a little less awful. Okay, keep pushing the hips back a little more. We're going to do a couple more breaths. If you wanted to go into it a little further, you could just make a little pillow here for your forehead. Lower the upper body down. Like lower the chest down so that the chest feels like it's coming down towards the floor. start to lift up this is where you really start to feel it coming out of this pose just take it slowly there is no magic cure to make it feel better just come out of it slowly Whew. all right good job now we'll do a uh, let's do a shoelace pose so we did pigeon pose, which worked the piriformis muscle. The shoelace pose also works that piriformis muscle, but in a slightly different way. Needless to say, by the end of this, your piriformis muscle will be pretty freaking loose. So, <clears throat> alright, so we brought our right foot over towards the left hip here, right? We crossed this left foot over on top. Now ideally, we're trying to get this knee on top of this knee. Okay, right now that's not really happening, right? So what you can do is press your hands down, lift the butt up, and lean forward a bit. Okay, now maybe you can shimmy this foot over a little more to bring that knee a little more on top of that other knee, and then drop the butt back down. Okay, you can see that helped a little bit. Okay. Now find some length in the spine. Now bring the hands forward, walk them forward, and then lower the head, kind of rounding the spine, sink into this. Big deep breaths. Okay, if you wanted to hold that pose for longer, you could, obviously. That's often the common practice to do, to hold it for two, three, four, five minutes. <clears throat> but we're just going to keep moving to the other side. So bring this left foot over to the right hip. Bring this right foot over on top. As you can see, this knee is not anywhere close to this knee, right? So what do I do? I lift the butt up and lean forward a little bit, and I shimmy this foot over a little more, and drop the butt back down. Now it's a little closer. <clears throat> now, with that going, let's take the hands, walk it forward, and then go ahead and round the spine, let the head drop down. And we'll sink into this for a few breaths. Give me two more breaths. 
and sing into it just a little more in these last couple breaths. Okay, let's start to lift up. And untangle the legs. All right, now uh, we're going to do this uh, pose called grabbing the tail. Uh, might be a little variation on it. It's my variation on it. Uh, I'm sure you've probably seen it before, maybe. But what we're going to do is first just sit here in staff pose, okay? Now we're going to just lower, we're going to roll over onto our left hip. Okay, you might need to roll way over. Now bend the right knee. Grab onto the top of that right foot. Now bring this right knee back as far as you can. Okay? Now this is obviously just a good stretch right here. Hopefully you should feel that in the quad. Okay? Now what we can also do is once you got that going there, is start to lift your upper body up. Now flex these left toes up. Bring the hands on either side of this left foot. Uh, engage the left quads like we did before, like you're trying to lift the kneecap. Uh, so those quads are nice engaged. That's going to release the hamstring and let the hamstring relax. And when the muscle is relaxed, that's how it stretches. Okay? <clears throat> now Go ahead and fold forward over that left foot or left leg. Maybe you can even grab onto that left foot. Good. And let's come out of that. So to come out of this, make sure you roll over onto your left side first, and then you can bring that foot around. Okay. If you stay straighten and try to bring that foot around the, the bones the joints don't move that way okay so it's kind of important uh, to roll over into your left hip and swing that leg around okay so let's do it over on the other side now so starting staff pose we're going to roll on to the right hip okay and then bring this left foot around and back grab onto the top of this left foot Bring this knee back as far as it can go. This right here is a good stretch. If that other one, you know, folding over the other leg didn't work for you, this is a mighty fine stretch right here. Otherwise, just keep this left leg where it is. Lower, raise the upper body. Bring both hands on either side of this right leg. Engage the quads. Right foot is flexed, fold forward. Perhaps grabbing onto that foot. All right, lift up out of that. So we're lifting up, rolling onto the right hip, swinging this leg around. Good. Now we'll do butterfly pose. So this is a pretty basic line. Bring the soles of the feet together, right? And slide the feet in towards the groin. Good. Now you notice that your knees are probably way up, like mine are, right? So what we can do to help that is use your muscles to try to pull the feet in towards the groin. So the feet aren't actually going to move anymore, but imagine you're trying to pull them in. And then the knees magically go down a little more. Okay. Now get some length in the spine and fold forward if you can. And then round the spine. And as always, breathe into it. Even as we're holding these poses, try not to let the mind wander too much. I just try and keep focusing on the breath in this pose here. 
and how this pose feels and focusing on this minute, this second, right here, right now, and trying not to think about what happens, you know, earlier today at work, or what you're going to have for dinner, or what you're going to have for dessert, or what Netflix you're going to binge watch. No, don't think about that. <laughs> think about this moment right here, we're in butterfly pose, we're breathing, we're pulling these feet in, being totally present in this moment right here, finding gratitude that we live in this moment, and then start to lift up out of it. Okay, uh, can I shake that out a little bit? Let's do a reclining hero. So, there's a couple different ways to do this. I'll just start off as a way, the way without props. <clears throat> Even though, me and myself, I personally probably should use a prop. So, what we're going to do is we're kneeling, but you're going to bring the feet slightly apart. Okay? So that you can lower the butt down in between your feet. If this doesn't work for you, you can take a block and sit on a block. Okay? At various angles of the block. Okay? Whatever works for you. I sometimes use a block. Yeah, my butt's almost down onto the mat. We'll just go with it for now. Now, start to lower the upper body down. Okay? And see if you can come down into the forearms. This is a mighty fine variation right here. Let the head rock back. Try to lift the chest a bit. And then maybe at some point you can lower down even further, bring the head onto the mat, and lower all the way down. Okay, so if that works for you, keep going. Otherwise, there's some variations that we can do. You could you know, put a block behind your back here. lower down onto the block, okay? If you wanted to get really yoga fancy, you could get one of these yoga wheels, right? And put it behind you. And try this variation. This actually feels really good because it actually helps open the chest a little more because the shoulder allows the shoulder blades to come back but still pushing the chest up. So, I mean, you don't need one of these yoga wheels, but it's pretty sweet. So, whatever variation you got, work with that. And after you've done that for a few breaths, let's start to lift on up. And come back down to seated. And we're almost there, all right? Let's uh, lay down onto the back, do some bridge poses. So this is just to get um, some mild back bends going here. So let's plant the feet, knees are bent, hands are down by the hips. And now we're gonna lift the hips up. So you're engaging the glutes to lift the hips up Try to lift the chest, press the shoulder blades back like you're hugging the shoulder blades together. You can even interlace the fingers behind the lower back and press the hands towards the feet. And keep breathing. And keep breathing. Keep hugging those shoulder blades together. Keep lifting the chest. Now really engage the glutes to press the hips up. Two more breaths. Good. Lower down. Let's hug the knees into the chest. All right, now this next pose 
Um, it helps to have one of these yoga straps. You can literally pick these up at like the dollar store. Um, and I mean, if you don't have one of these, you can use a towel, like kind of wrap a towel around your foot and hold on to the towel. Otherwise, using this strap here, put it around the foot. <clears throat> now we're going to lay, so we're here in staff pose, right? So we're going to lay down now, so we're just perfectly flat. And now we're just going to lift the left foot up. Okay, this is where this strap comes in handy, obviously, because I can't quite, I mean, I can touch my foot, but you don't need to, okay, in order to get the stretch. Because what we're going to do now is try to keep the hips flat onto the mat. But take this left foot over to the right side while keeping the hips flat. So, you know, don't lift this left hip. It does, that's not going to get you a stretch. Okay, keep this left hip onto the mat and bring this left foot over to the right. Good. Keep holding it. Okay. Now we're going to take this, take the strap into your left hand, bring this left foot off to the side. My foot probably looks giant right now on camera. That's awesome. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe you can even roll onto the right shoulder just a little bit, or left shoulder just a little bit. But then we're going to peel open the right shoulder so we're back onto uh, the mat. The back is flat onto the mat. Take this right hand, bring it off to the right side, gaze off the right shoulder. This right leg is still straight and flat, so you kind of have a lot of 90 degree angles going here, right? So this leg is off a 90 degree angle, this right arm is off at a 90 degree angle. Gazing off the right fingertips. Good. Now let's come out of that now, and we'll do the other side, and then we're going to be done. Okay, so we started in staff pose. We're going to put this strap onto the right foot now, <clears throat> and then we're going to lay down, and we're going to lift this right leg up. We're going to grab onto this left, onto the strap with this left hand, keep the right hip onto the mat. It's important as you bring that right foot over to the left side. Obviously it's not going to go very far. All right? Unless you insert the soleil, it's not going to go very far. Good. Now let's take that foot off to the right side, grabbing the strap with the right hand, and bring that foot off to the right side, bring this left hand up, and off to the left, gaze off the left fingertips, so the hips are flat on the mat, the back is flat on the mat, your foot is off to the right, your hand is off to the left, that left foot is straight and flat on the mat, You're gazing off the left fingertips. For a couple more breaths. And then release all that. Take this strap off of your foot. And now we're going to take Shavasana. So, <clears throat> go ahead and lay flat. You can turn your palms up if that feels good for you. You know, oftentimes that doesn't work for people's anatomy to lift their palms up. Uh, so if not, put your, put your palms down. <clears throat> 
the lifting the palms up kind of helps encourage to lift the chest up a little bit. Good, and then close the eyes. Now relax the eyes. And then relax the jaw. And relax the facial muscles. And relax the neck. And then relax the belly. And relax the spine. As if your whole body is just kind of melting into the mat. You have to allow it to melt into the mat. And just release the arms and the shoulders. Release the hips. Relax the legs. And take a nice big inhale. One last big inhale. The biggest one yet. And let it all go. Enjoy your rest here for a couple minutes of silence. Again, not letting the mind wander. Just surrendering to the experience of this moment. And not thinking about any other moment. And if thoughts do start to come up in your head, to try not to immediately grasp onto them. But just notice that the thought came up and then let it go and come back to this moment. Right, and start to wake the body up. Wiggle in the fingers and the toes. And bring my hands up and take a nice big stretch. And hug the knees into the chest. And just make your way up to seated, keeping the eyes closed. Bring the hands together at the heart. Give me a slight bow to the head. And just coming back to this notion of gratitude, okay, just trying to shift our focus and our awareness a little more on the things that we're grateful for, for the things that we have in life, rather than focusing so much attention on the things that we don't have in life and things that are negative in our life, okay? It doesn't mean to say that we need to only focus on positive things, right? Uh, but just try... And like one or two more things in your life, try to focus on those things that you're grateful for. And just see, see how, that, how that changes your focus in life and your attitude towards life and your emotional state, okay? Just that little shift, trying to give a little bit of effort 
to find that gratitude and let me know how it makes you feel. Okay, and with that, thank you so much for watching this video. Om Shanti Namaste. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. Whether you're a runner or not, I hope you found it helpful. Let me know, comment down below, give me a like, maybe share it with your friends. And otherwise, hey, I'll see you next time. See ya.